So uh, going into nutrition a little bit, and now I have uh, exactly minus one minute left to do that. Uh, I, I think we, we should really consider the fact that uh, the brain is a huge thing. I mean, it, it's 1.5 kilos. Uh, but it really receives 750 milliliters of blood per minute, which is 15% of the total blood volume. So it's a lot of the energy uh, the, that, that is put into to, uh, our brain. It eats quite a lot of sugar, uh, so it eats uh, about 75 grams of uh, glucose every day. And that's all in order to have all of these uh, neurons do what they do. And of course, all the glia cells, which I should remember, I shouldn't forget. The main thing I think in, in thinking about what we need nutrition for in the brain is uh, the communication between the nerve cells. This is really what it is all about. It's the synapse, it's the neurotransmitters which are being released and which connect to other receptors on, on other nerves, nerve cells here. This is where all the communication takes place. This is where we need nutrition. Because as you saw in the small videos that I had, whenever you have activation of nerve cells, you have a reaction, a tissue reaction. You need to create new synapses. You need to remove some synapses and uh, change the dendritic tree in some way. All of that needs different nutrients in order to uh, build it up. All of those neurotransmitters have to be replaced. They need to uh, have some kind of substance in order to uh, uh, function. So there are at least two substances which are of importance. Uh, that, there's several more, but uh, I think uridine and DHA, one of the omega-3 fatty acids, are really uh, in vogue in many ways. Uh, and they are in vogue mainly because they are constituents of the cell membrane and uh, do actually uh, metabolize, metabolize into uh, compounds which are part of the actual cell membrane and are therefore necessary in order to build up uh, the synaptic uh, connections that we have. Uh, what is also uh, very clear is that uh, if you give rats uh, a diet containing DHA and uridine, you will see that the number of uh, spines which are being created in the brain actually goes up. So here you have the control situation, here you have uridine alone, here you have DHA, and here you have DHA plus uh, uridine. And you see that the number of contacts between different nerve cells actually goes up uh, in these rats. So that's important in itself, I would say. Um, but what is more important in many ways is that, that that actually seems to have beneficial effects in the animals. So if you hear, again, water maze, uh, rats have to find their way. Uh, they do it four times. They become better at it. But the ones which eat uridine and DHA actually become much better than the other rats here. So by just substituting some of the ingredients in the uh, nutrition, the rats actually perform quite a lot better. Uh, this has been shown also uh, in many other circumstances and by several different uh, groups. This is uh, from a review paper by uh, Fernando Gomez Pinilla, who's also going to be here on Friday and giving a talk probably on this exact uh, topic, uh, that if you combine DHA in this case together with exercise, you actually get a much stronger effect than if you just give DHA or exercise alone. So in this case, if you look at spatial learning ability, for instance, you see that the combination of the two is much, much bigger than uh, just giving DHA alone. And if you look at BDNF production, it's also mainly if you combine the two uh, that you see the main uh, effect. So there, there are some uh, effects which seem to be uh, stronger when you combine diet and exercise. Uh, uh, Gomez Pinilla has some suggestions about how this could happen by increasing BDNF and IGF. One, and you're going to hear quite a lot more about that. But the outcome in the end, hopefully, is uh, a cognitive effect. Um, I think I need to skip these. Uh, but I would like, just before summarizing uh, briefly, 
uh, again point out that this is animal experiments. We have very little knowledge, again, about how this works in uh, human subjects. There is, right now, to my knowledge, only one really well-controlled study uh, on DHA. Uh, it's a study from uh, Australia uh, in which they have uh, given, I think, about 1,000 school children uh, a cocktail containing DHA, uh, which they had to uh, take once per day for about six months. Uh, they had a control group of other children which also received a cocktail, but without the DHA, uh, and they report, even though it, is, it, it, it was really a uh, controlled trial, so uh, the children were blinded, none of the children knew whether they received the DHA or not, none of the investigators knew which children had received DHA and which had not. Uh, the result was that uh, the ones who received the DHA actually uh, were uh, doing much better at school uh, following uh, this six-month uh, period. But it's just one study and we need to do quite a lot more. We're trying to do that uh, here at the ELSA Center, and this is also part of the background for arranging this symposium to sort of uh, get an update on uh, how much we know about all of this. We have uh, this exercise training system, which many of you have probably heard about, in which we have children with cerebral palsy training uh, at home uh, using the internet and, uh, and the computer. And I think here it's an obvious thought to also think about the nutrition for these children to make sure that they get the best possible nutrition. And this is uh, why we, uh, about a couple of years ago, started this pro project, Food for Brains, in which we have tried to sort of gather all the information which is available in order to uh, make sure that the, the children get the best possible uh, nutrition. We're now also doing a, a, a study on this together with Ben DeKeens, who is the, the next uh, speaker. We are trying to, to do a double-blinded, uh, placebo-controlled uh, study in which we will give some of the children uh, DHA, uridine, and, and other compounds, and another group of children, uh, what we think are uh, compounds which will not have a similar effect. So we, we hope with, within a year or so to uh, have some more solid data on, on all of this. Uh, so that's all I had. Only 10 minutes late, Kirsten. <laughs>